Hello everyone, it is Jazz here. Welcome to the excerpt reading for today. So I put out a little video for you guys to vote on what excerpt of a book that you wanted me to read. And The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis won. So I'm going to read a little bit of chapter 7 today, just two or three pages, and I hope you guys enjoy it. While the two boys were whispering behind, both girls suddenly cried, Oh, and stopped. The robin, cried Lucy. The robin, it's flown away. And so it had, right out of sight. And now what are we to do? Said Edmund, giving Peter a look which was as much to say, What did I tell you? Shh, look, said Susan. What? Said Peter. There's something moving among the trees over there to the left. They all stared as hard as they could, and no one felt very comfortable. There it goes again. I saw it that time, too. It's still there. It's just hiding behind that big tree. What is it? Asked Lucy, trying very hard not to sound nervous. Whatever it is, it's dodging us. It's something that doesn't want to be seen. Let's go home, said Susan. And then, though nobody said it out loud, suddenly realized the same fact that Edmund had whispered to Peter at the end of last chapter. They were lost. What's it like? It's a kind of animal. Look, look quick, there it is. They all saw it this time, a whiskered furry face which had looked out at them from behind a tree. But this time it didn't immediately draw back. Instead, the animal put its paw against its mouth just as humans put their finger on their lips when they are signaling you to be quiet. Then it disappeared again. The children all stood, holding their breath. A moment later, the stranger came out from behind the tree, glanced all around as if it were afraid someone was watching, and said, Hush, made signs to them to join it in the thicker bit of the wood where it was standing, and then once more disappeared. I know what it is. It's a beaver. I saw the tail. It wants us to go to it, and it is warning us not to make a noise. I know. But the question is, are we to go to it or not? What do you think, Lou? I think it's a nice beaver. Yes, but how do we know? Shan't we have to risk it? I mean, it's no good standing here. I feel I want some dinner. At this moment, the beaver again popped its head out from behind the tree and beckoned earnestly to them. Come on, let's give it a try. All keep close together. We ought to be a match for one beaver if it turns out to be an enemy. So the children all got close together and walked up to the tree and in behind it. And there, sure enough, they found the beaver. But it still drew back, saying to them in a hoarse whisper, Further in. You must come further in. Right in here. We're not safe out in the open. Only when it had led them to a dark spot where four trees grew so close together that their boughs met and the brown earth and pine needles could be seen underfoot because no snow had been able to fall there, did it begin to talk to them. Are you the sons of Adam and daughters of Eve? With some of them. Shh! Not so loud, please. We're not safe, even here. Why? Who are you afraid of? There's no one here but ourselves. There are the trees. They're always listening. Most of them are on our side. But there are some trees that would betray us to err, if you know who I mean. If it comes to talking about sides, how do we know you're a friend? Not meaning to be rude, Mr. Beaver, but you see, we're strangers. Quite right, quite right, air is mistaken. With these words, it held up to them a little white object, and they all looked at it in surprise, until suddenly Lucy said, Oh, of course, it's my handkerchief. When I gave poor Mr. Tom this. That's right, poor fella got wind of the rest before it happened and handed it over to me. He said if anything ever happened to him, I must mate you here and take you on to. Here, the beaver's voice sank into silence and it gave one or two very mysterious nods. Then, signaling to the children to stand as close around it as they possibly could, so that their faces were actually tickled by its whiskers, it added in a low whisper, They say, Aslan is on the move. And now a very curious thing happened. None of the children knew Aslan any more than you do. But 
The moment the beaver had spoken these words, everyone felt quite different. So that was my little reading of Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you liked this video, like this video. I hope you guys have a great day, and that is all I have to say to you all. Bye! Blooper real! Four trees grew so close together that they... <laughs> had led them into a dark spot where four trees glue... glue? <laughs> trees grew close together that now grew so close, so close together, so freaking close together. When it had led them into a dark spot where two, two trees, four trees because there's four, four children, help me. As land is on the move, I said land because that's not his name. <laughs> Aslan, it's Aslan. <laughs>